Silverlight 3 now includes a save file dialog box to allow your users to save content to their hard disk. Your users are not limited to isolated storage when using this. So let's take a look at building a simple example of an application that uses a save file dialog box. First of all, create a new Silverlight application in Visual Studio and make sure that you add the web project to it. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to go in and we're going to create a simple UI that's going to show us how the save file dialog box works. So on my UI I'm going to have a stack panel. I'm going to make it horizontal and I'm just going to give it a height, say 30 pixels. And my stack panel is going to contain a text box that I'm going to call TTS. I'm going to give it some basic default text. Enter text here, please. And that should do it. And then I'm going to have a button. I'm going to give it a name as well. I'm going to call it BTN. I'm going to give it a caption. Save me. And I'm going to wire up a click event handler to it. So when I type click equals quote, so I get this menu that pops up saying new event handler. If I press tab, it generates the event handler for me and fills it into the attribute here in my XAML. So there's my UI. Incredibly simple UI, but we'll take a look at how this works to be able to instantiate a save file dialog. And as you can imagine, the save file dialog happens when I click the Save Me button. So let's take a look at the BTN click. Now I've added earlier on here a using system.io and using system.txt because some of the classes that I'm going to be using as I'm uh, writing out my file uh, will be using uh, classes in that namespace. So if I take a look here, save file dialog is now an option because it's a class in Silverlight and I can say my save file dialog equals new save file dialog and it returns a nullable bool so I'm going to say bool ret equals my save file dialog dot show dialog. So if the value returned is true, that means the user has selected something. And um, I will then take a look at writing out this file. So to write out this file, I have to use a stream. So I'll say using stream. Oops, need that to be in brackets. Uh, stream, I'm going to call it fs is equal to, I'm going to cast the file that the file dialog gave us um, into a stream, so my save file dialog dot open file. And now I'm going to write some text out to that. So to write to a stream, I have to use a byte array, so I'm going to say byte this info equals, I'm going to encode it in a UTF 8, which is in the uh, system.txt class, which is why I'm using system.txt up here. UTF-8 encoding, I just have to say that yes, oops, that that's true. And then get the bytes that were in the in my TTS, which is my text box. So if you remember back here on my main page, I call my text box TTS if I just build it. See, I'm in good shape. Earlier I was getting a red wavy on the line on TTS here because I hadn't built it yet and as a result the code editor didn't recognize it was there, but now we see that that's clean. And now I'll just write out info starting at zero for the length of info. So it's just writing out the entire array and then I'll close my stream. Make sure I got all my brackets good. Yep. So of course this is just illustrative. It's assuming that I'm returning a true on here and I haven't put any validation or anything like that in there. That's you know, that's stuff that you can add later on. So shall we take a look at what happens when I do this? So let me save. Let me rebuild it. Succeeded and let me run it. So the first thing that's going to happen is going to ask me to modify the web config to allow debugging. I'll say yes. I'll run it. We'll connect to my local host and we will see this thing that's saying, hey, enter text here, please. So I'm going to go and say something like, hello world, how are you? And click save me. So now that I've clicked Save Me, we're seeing the standard Windows uh, dialog coming up. I'm running Windows 7 here, so this is the Windows 7 dialog. So I can go to my desktop. 
save it on my desktop. I haven't specified file name or any type yet, so I'm just going to say hello world.txt and I'm going to click save. And now my code has gone out and saved it. To prove that that's the case, let's open up a Windows Explorer. I'll move it over here. We'll take a look at my desktop and we'll see hello world.txt is on it. If I open that up, we can see the text that we had earlier, hello world, how are you? So I've now saved this text file to my desktop and it contains the contents of that text block. We didn't use a default name or anything like that and we didn't have a filter on there either. So one of the things that we can actually do is add filters to our save file dialog. Let's just go back and just change a little bit of the code. In order to do that, we can, oh, it has already stopped running. So how we do this is using the filter property of the save file dialog and if you've ever done uh, any kind of uh, Windows programming in the past you'll probably recognize the string that's used. So let's say my save file dialog dot filter equals and it's one of these bar separated strings text files which is common in common dialogs uh, let's say bar star dot txt bar all files bar star dot star so again just using the very common model and what happens here is that there are two entries here there's text files is the friendly text saying something dot txt and then the, the type star dot txt and then all files being the friendly text and the type star dot star so we actually have two types there in our filter so let's say we want to use one of them. So I'm going to say my save file dialog dot filter index equals one, and let's run it out again. So let me save it, and I'll press F5 to execute. So it's going to build. It's going to execute. Have my text here. Blah blah blah. I click save me. And now we can see that the save as type has been highlighted. And I have text files or all files. And I can go ahead and save it. We'll see there's the hello world that I saved earlier. I can save over that. It already exists, so I want to replace it. So this is functionality that's built into the save dialog. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to open my Windows Explorer again. I'm going to look at my desktop. And on my desktop, I'm going to open Hello World, and there's the text that I've just entered. So here's a very simple tutorial in using the Save As file dialog. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you.